Galaxy rotation does not seem to follow Kepler's third law in an obvious manner. Far out from the matter distribution, the rotation velocity should fall off with the square root of the distance r, but it does not. In most spiral galaxies, it levels to a constant out of tens of kiloparsecs, as famously obtained by Vera Rubin and collaborators, and measured in detail by the Spark team. If we were ants living in one less dimension, however, Kepler's third law would exactly be what is observed, a constant velocity. This is because Gauss's law leads to an inverse force instead of an inverse r to the minus 2 force. A way to achieve this in our actual world, which is three-dimensional of course, is with the help of a filamentary or cylindrical gravity source. We here report detailed feats of rotation curves showing an elongated source as a competitive hypothesis. A possibility that also works is to modify the law of gravity, somehow ad hoc, to effectively draw from r to minus 2 to 1 over r at large distances by altering Newton's second law. This goes under the name modifying Newtonian dynamics or MOND. These theories, however, lose the theoretical elegance of Newtonian mechanics. We will examine two versions on MOND dubbed simple and standard. More mainstream is to uphold the laws of mechanics but introduce dark matter sources. We present several analyses. In the first one, we compare the quality of fit of several purely spherical and purely cylindrical models to the galaxy database. The second one proceeds by studying intermediate geometries that are deformed by use of spherical harmonics. As can be seen in our tables and histograms, counting how many galaxies preferred by chi-square each of the models, Elongated sources provide fits that are competitive with the best spherically symmetric dark matter models. However, an advantage of the elongated dark matter distribution is that specific radial profiles are not very important. The constant velocity is due to the prolate, or elongated, sources and a broad slate of density profiles can be used. If perfect spherical symmetry is used, however, you need to stay very close to the isothermal 1 over r squared dark matter profile, such as in the Einastov model. That is, imposing spherical geometry restricts the range of dark matter interaction, whereas an elongated geometry is less constraining. With the spherical harmonic expansion at hand, we can decide whether the supposed dark matter halo is rather prolate or oblate. One way to qualitatively decide is to extract the difference between the principal moments of inertia. We extract a clearly negative value, implying that the halo tends to be prolate in most of the galaxies, in agreement with the various models above. To get a more quantitative value, we proceed to an extraction of the ellipticity. This is defined as the ratio of two principal semi axes Any of the two that are equal by cylindrical symmetry quotient it by the third one. If this parameter is 1, the dark matter distribution is spherical. If smaller than 1, it is prolate or elongated, and if longer than 1, oblate or flat as a pancake. We perform two galaxy by galaxy fit to the spark that base, but we have found that averaging the ellipticity, as done by Algo de Tor and other investigators, is biased toward oblateness, which may explain some disagreements in the earlier literature. Since we are studying a ratio, the geometric mean is a further measure of the distribution. In the first fit, we employ a large number of galaxies, removing only a few outliers. We find a clearly prolate average, but with a large uncertainty that also allows the spherical case. In the second fit, we carefully curate the set by removing galaxies whose velocity curves are strongly oscillating, probably meaning that the visible component has not been fully separated when extracting the dark matter one. This second analysis employs a multipolar expansion, with the ellipticity extracted from the second quadrupolar coefficient. We find an ellipticity around 0.5, meaning that typical halos have a longer axis twice as long as the shorter axis. Many halos seem extremely prolate. 
In conclusion, we find good evidence in the data that dark matter halos can be rather prolate. Cosmological simulations also find this prolateness, but fail to stress it's important to explain rotation curve of spiral galaxies, and employing the arithmetic mean introduces a bias toward oblateness. If the results for a typical spiral galaxy are adapted for the Milky Way, we find that the supposed dark matter density near Earth can be up to a factor 2 smaller than the usually employed to characterize direct searches. Since dark matter is not concentrated on the galactic disk, but above and below it. A scientific paper detailing all the analysis will follow shortly on archive.org.